I didn't think something like that could happen either. Well, it took five years for Vignette to really even get any media coverage. In the sweltering summer of 1983, the disappearance of 18-month-old Vignette Trudy Teague shocked the residents of Robert Taylor Homes in Chicago, a public housing project on the south side. Vignette's parents, Kathy and her husband, decided to have a rare night out, leaving their precious daughter in the care of her grandmother and extended family. The mother was very particular about who could watch her children, and her daughter was described as sweet and cautious. The couple's other children, three sons, were also at the apartment building at the time as a family lived there in addition to their grandparents in separate units. Little did they all know that this night would alter the course of their lives forever. On June 25th, Kathy's mother, her two sisters, and her cousin were sitting with a large group of neighbors outside of the building's breezeway, playing cards and talking as they went in and out of the apartment. The air was thick and hot, and the atmosphere seemed ordinary. Around 9.30 p.m., the neighbor holding vignette set her down in the hallway apparently near her family's apartment door, sometime after Vignette's grandmother stepped inside for privacy after receiving a phone call. Though it is not clear when, at some point, Kathy's sisters drifted off and the cousin also left. When the woman returned in just a matter of minutes and after the neighbor had already gone inside to do the dishes, she realized that Vignette had vanished without a trace. Some reports stated that there were approximately 50 people in the hall, including relatives of Vignette and some of her neighbors, are more so going in and out of the building and using the hall. The child was last seen barefoot, wearing a multicolored striped tank top and brown and yellow floral pants. She had black hair, brown eyes, and her ears were pierced. Vignette was about 2 feet 4 inches tall and weighed approximately 27 pounds at the time of her disappearance. When Kathy and her husband returned from the drive-in movie around 3 a.m., the eerie silence and the sight of police cars hinted at the impending tragedy. A neighbor from a fifth floor window cried out, Catty, 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 do you have your baby? The panic in her voice echoed through the brick and asphalt canyon, foretelling the nightmare that awaited the husband and wife. Kathy instinctively knew that something had happened to her eight-month-old daughter and ran to the seventh floor unit where she met her mother and mother-in-law, but no vignette. The search for the child had begun immediately. Although the gallery was packed with people and there were only three exits, Nobody saw anything suspicious. Kathy, driven by desperation and fear, combed through the Robert Taylor Holmes building, searching floor to floor and door to door. She sifted through incinerator ashes and pared down elevator shafts, clinging to hope. The heartbreaking reality settled in, no ransom note, no clothing, and a multitude of false leads from cruel crank collars, toyed with the grieving mother's emotions. The cruel callers told the mother that the child's body had turned up in a bag by the railroad tracks or was cut to shreds on the roof of a nearby restaurant. Another caller put a young girl on the line and had her holler, Mommy, Mommy, Mommy. Teague's story was briefly covered by major Chicago papers and newscasts that summer, but nothing more. Kathy's best guess amidst the anguish was that someone at the playground earlier that day had taken a liking to Vignette and decided to adopt her. She held on to and still holds on to the belief that her daughter is alive, taken by someone who merely desired a pretty child for themselves. Years passed 
and the mystery of Vignette's disappearance deepened. The building she disappeared from was located in the 5000 block of South Federal Street, but it has since been demolished. Nightmares haunted Kathy. intensifying during holidays and the anniversary of the abduction. The pain of not knowing, the void left by her missing daughter, it all became a constant companion. Despite extensive investigations and the passage of time, Vignette's case remains unsolved. Authorities believed a non-family member had abducted her, but the lack of witnesses and evidence made progress elusive. The Teague family's desperate search extended beyond the immediate community, reaching the wider public through appeals. In 2011, an article revisited Vignette's disappearance, highlighting the ongoing pain experienced by Kathy and her family. The passage of 28 years had not dulled the ache of a mother who cried every day for her missing child. Age progression photos were also released, offering a glimpse into what Vignette might look like as an adult. I didn't hold anyone accountable or blame anyone because I didn't think something like that could happen either in the projects because everybody was so close and everybody looked out for each other's children and, you know, the building was packed. It was hot out that night, you know. So we don't know if it was somebody new that moved in the building, you know, just at that moment just saw a baby standing in the hallway by herself and just took her. Well, it took five years for Vignette to really even get any media coverage. And that's when the National Center came into my life. They did more than make a difference over the years for me. I got to see what my daughter looked like growing up as to where I didn't have that opportunity to see her personally, but through that age progression, I at least have an idea of what my child may look like. And that gives me hope. The child's mother still clings to hope, fueled by the internet's ability to share images and information. She urged anyone with information or knowledge to come forward, emphasizing that the case was never closed, merely suspended and awaiting the elusive breakthrough that could bring her loved one home. While Vignette's dental records and fingerprints are not on file, her DNA is available. Anyone with information about this case is urged to contact the Chicago Police Department Area 1 Youth Headquarters at 312-747-5789, the CPD at 312-747-8385 or 312-744-8266, or the Federal Bureau of Investigation, the FBI, at 312-431-1333. The agency case number is shown on the screen. May the family and friends of Vignette T find closure in this case. Thank you.